By AD 610, the Anglo-Saxons ruled over most of Britain. The only places they didn't conquer were modern-way Scotland, Wales, and Cornwall. These Germanic tribes originally invaded by boat across the North Sea, so the places they settled were along the coast or next to rivers. They arrived in an England very different to the one we know now. Back then, most of the land was covered in dense forest. The newcomers cut down trees to build houses and to create farmland. Remains of many of these Anglo-Saxon villages can still be seen today, especially their churches, which were the only buildings to be made of stone. These sites reveal lots about the beliefs, traditions, culture and society of Anglo-Saxon England. Sutton Hoo, Suffolk At Sutton Hoo in Suffolk, you can visit the burial site of a wealthy Anglo-Saxon king. The site dates back to around AD 600 and was probably the resting place of Redwald of East Anglia. He was buried on board a ship alongside lots of treasure and items he might need in the afterlife. This included tableware, gold coins, weapons, armor, and even musical instruments. Some of the objects had come from Byzantium, modern-day Turkey, and the Mediterranean. The site tells archaeologists a lot about the life of an Anglo-Saxon king. This is especially helpful because there aren't many written records from this time. Staffordshire Hoard Staffordshire Almost 4,000 Anglo-Saxon artefacts were discovered in a field near Lichfield in Staffordshire. Many of these were parts of sores that had been broken off, such as the hilts. No one quite knows why the items hadn't been left whole. The objects in this hoard show just how skilled the Anglo-Saxon craftsmen were. The weapons, armor, and jewelry at this site have been carefully made out of gold and silver, and sometimes inlaid with garnet or colored glass. The treasure was made in the 6th and 7th centuries, and mysteriously buried not long after. Lewis Chessman Isle of Lewis The Lewis Chessman is a collection of 78 chess pieces, found alongside 14 counters for another game and an ivory belt buckle. They were found on the Isle of Lewis in Scotland, but were probably made in Norway. Some of these objects were made of walrus ivory, while the rest were made from whale teeth. The chess set is one of the only complete medieval chess sets ever to have been found. The chessmen are in such good condition that they probably hadn't been played with very much. The collection may originally have belonged to a trader or dealer. Lindisfarne Gospels Northumbria The Lindisfarne Gospels is a handwritten, illuminated copy of the Biblical Gospels, which dates back to around AD 715. It was probably written by a monk called Eidfrith, the Bishop of Lindisfarne. It is a wonderful example of insular art. This style of art was a combination of Celtic and Anglo-Saxon designs and was unique to Britain and Ireland in the 7th and 8th centuries. The Gospels originally had a leather cover decorated with gold and jewels, but this was lost when the Vikings raided Lindisfarne. Sandbach Crosses Cheshire The origin of the Sandbach Crosses is a mystery. They date back to the 9th century and were both carved by the same person. These tall crosses are engraved with animals, faces, religious scenes, Anglo-Saxon and Celtic patterns, and even dragons. Each column is set on top of three stone steps. No one knows where they were originally erected or why they were carved. In the Middle Ages, they were brought to Sandbach in Cheshire. In the 16th or 17th century, the crosses were torn down and broken into pieces. The pieces were later gathered together and were finally reassembled in 1816. West Stowe, West Suffolk West Stowe is not just an archaeological site, but also home to a reconstructed Anglo-Saxon village. The village was inhabited by Anglo-Saxons from AD 420 to 650. About 70 sunken featured buildings were constructed on this site. These were small, wooden buildings built over shallow pits. They had sloped, thatched roofs that reached the ground. There were also seven large halls and evidence of animal pens. The village was excavated from 1849 to 1976. In 1977, the site was almost turned into a rubbish dump, but permission was given instead to create a reconstructed Anglo-Saxon village. Offa's Dyke, Welsh border. Offa's Dyke is a large, deep ditch, 82 miles long, 20 meters wide, and 2.5 meters high. 
it formed a boundary between the Anglo-Saxon Kingdom of Mercia and the Welsh Kingdom of Powys. Most historians agree that the dike was probably dug by the Mercians at the command of King Offa, who ruled from AD 757 to 796. Workers dug the ditch on the Welsh side and piled up the earth on the Anglian, English side. From the top of this earthwork, Mercians had a good view into Wales. It would have provided a good defence against potential Welsh invaders. All Saints Church, Bricksworth, Northamptonshire All Saints Church is the largest remaining Anglo-Saxon church in England. Although the building was extended in the 10th, 14th and 19th centuries, visitors can still see many parts of the original architecture. It was designed to look like a Roman basilica, and it was built using stone and brick tiles from old Roman buildings. The church dates back to the 7th century. At this time, Bricksworth also had a monastery, Bricksworth Abbey, which was founded by an abbot called Sixwolf. He would later become the Bishop of Mercia. The Prittlewell Prince, Essex The burial site of the Prittlewell Prince, aka the King of Bling, was discovered by archaeologists in 2003. This Anglo-Saxon royal was buried in a large, wooden burial chamber measuring four metres squared. His bones, coffin and burial chamber rotted away a long time ago, but lots of metal artefacts, similar to those at Sutton Hoo, and a few teeth had stood the test of time. He was buried with a small gold cross over each eye, which suggests he was a Christian. Historians believe he may have been Prince Sexa, the brother of King Sabert of Essex. Great Ryber Cemetery, Norfolk The Great Ryber Cemetery was an amazing find for archaeologists. It contained numerous wooden Anglo-Saxon coffins. These graves were found in waterlogged ground, which prevented the wood from rotting away. Eighty-one of the coffins were made by splitting a tree trunk in half lengthwise, then hollowing it out. The body was laid in one half, and the other half formed a lid. The remaining six graves were lined with planks of wood beneath and above the body. The graves were aligned from east to west, which indicates that they may have belonged to a community of early Christians.